it's a 1-0. That's what I'm talking about. Give me those tier lists. It is time to talk some crap for everybody that has been doubting us again. Okay, well, it's not like they're doubting us like, hard, but, I mean, they still had us low in the tier. I promise I will try not to be as obnoxious this time around when it comes to making sure that people uh, don't get it rubbed in their face. No. Why you? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Rendezvous, your source for everything 100 Thieves LCS, all split long. And boy, did we make the first move. A lopsided series against NRG, where I, yeah, well, I was expecting them to rebound from where they were in spring and look better. But I can honestly say that that's the NRG that we saw. What we saw was a very disjointed group that really could not put it all together at all at any point during this series. If you want to see my full reaction to the highlights of the series because I wasn't able to watch it live, that video is currently available now, but let's talk through it a little bit. Because Quid and Meech had one hell of a series. And by hell of a series, I mean, this was so much fun to watch and game two was probably the most decisive win this roster has ever had together. I can't think of a single best of one from last split, let alone any games during best of fives that compare to this. But you still have a lot of the similarities that we did see in spring with our unique drafting. And that starts with Quid in the mid lane on this Ezreal pick, which had just played incredibly well. The highlight of the entire series is going to be his quadra kill that he was able to get at Baron whenever NRG started it. Really wasn't all together. We were able to poke him down and then Ezreal did as real things and just put out damage from afar gap closed and he, he actually like eat on top of somebody for the final kill it was great game two i think he played tristana if i'm not mistaken yeah he was on tristana and just like overall played this series incredibly well he was getting ahead in lanes it's not like he was getting solo kills necessarily but he was getting cs advantages and playing exactly how you would want it to and in team fights he was, I mean, that speaks for itself. Meech is the big one, though, that even though he didn't win, like, the accolades that Quid won this week, my eyes go to him because this was a bot lane that when we came into the series, the expectation was, okay, can Meech and Ayla hold on against FBI and Huhi, who appear to be one of the better duos in bot lane that we have in the LCS, even if that wasn't the case this series? And Meech put up numbers. Guy was performing incredibly well. Game two on the Jinx was in the right spots to deal damage every single time. A silent success story from this series was actually Ayla, who's not gonna get as much attention. Obviously, uh, there were bigger names with bigger score lines, but I'm thinking of some of those Leona engages and Leona ults. He was hitting everybody and in spots where he needed to be, which is phenomenal. I think the strongest I've typically seen Ayla is whenever he's on Enchanters, but seeing him on the Leona for the engage was a really, really fun time. And it's another pick that we can now add to our depth of champion pools, our champion pool ocean that we have as a team, because I mean, let's talk about the Zyra jungle. The last time that River played against Contracts, he pulls out the Shaco jungle just to piss him off. And now he pulls out the Zyra jungle, which counters the Nidalee that Contracts was trying to go for and pisses him off again. It's like, man, River has his number for whatever reason. I'm not gonna complain, obviously, but I'm loving the diversity that we're showing already. Like in best three series, like you do wanna see a little bit more testing because you're prepping for playoffs more or less. You have seven series to get to the point where that in playoffs, like you lock in, you focus, and being able to have some of these unique counter picks and like throw people for a loop and draft, it's like, okay, well, what do they ban against us? Gonna, are you gonna ban Zyra now? Are you gonna ban Corky? Are you gonna ban Trit? Like, what, what are you gonna do? We have too many champions that you can ban, so you have to like figure out your target strategy, which to be clear, became our weakness to a certain extent because our, like the one point that you could target and pivot to, specifically our bot lane, they were able to do. But as of right now, it seems like we're plugging up some of those weaknesses. Now, I will say the weakest player from this series was actually Sniper. 
Hey, you hear those sirens? I'm up on the rooftop now. I can actually see the smoke from where that's being caused a little bit further away. Wow. All right, here, let me show you. See if you can see it. I think you can see over there the gray smoke that's coming uh, between the buildings. It's behind whatever building is uh, there. Whatever's behind there uh, is on fire. But there's like, you can see it in the corner. There's like a little bit of construction on a building going on over there. I'm not sure, but that smoke is like clear as day. Anyways, back to Sniper, the Camille. I love the Camille. It's a fun pick. Like it's something that like I do want to see him on, especially as aggressive top laners continue to become more meta. Maybe not in particular this meta, but when we get to Worlds time, aggressive top laners always seem to be a thing consistently. So assuming lane swaps are out of the way, Camille will be incredibly important. The Renekton looked good. It just didn't look like phenomenal. I wouldn't say he like played his best League of Legends, but it was still enough to get the job done. And that's all that matters. The biggest accolade of the week though, player of the week goes to Quid, the retaining MVP, gets player of the week in his first week back. I don't, I'm trying to think, has there ever been an LCS player that has defended their MVP title and had two of them back to back? I'm assuming Bjergsen or Doublelift, like one of the two has probably done that so far, but either way, we're looking at a potential case for that if he can retain this over the next six weeks, but only time will tell. Overall, a solid win versus NRG, who unfortunately the weight of this series will be dampened slightly simply because people thought NRG would be a lot bigger or a lot better than they would be in summer compared to spring. Like we thought they would rebound more. They haven't. So unfortunately, it is going to come to next week in our matchup against Dignitas for us to really cement ourselves as yes, we are still a top four team trying to contend for a world spot. But before we get there, it's time for Around the Oregon news around 100 Thieves, LCS, 100 Thieves in general. We had a heist video come out three days ago going over to boot camp in Korea, which had a phenomenal moment, including Quid introducing the entire team to his family for the first time, a situation that you don't typically see all that often. Second, we had a vlog or like a mini vlog on Twitter within 24 hours of the series wrapping up, showing the behind the scenes mo like moments of that series, which honestly I think is how that type of content should be done. I don't need to wait two weeks to see like massive like post game day vlog stuff anymore. I'm sorry, but like I want to see that stuff right after in the way that this is shown now and use that content on YouTube that would normally be there for like vlog footage for like other stuff like I don't know 20 V ones and stuff like that like the fun stuff like that's what YouTube content should be. This type of stuff does really well for Twitter and short form content like shorts and everything else like hell yeah. And I knew I wasn't dreaming either whenever I saw that video because I was like okay well wait is this actually happening are we actually getting like content immediately afterwards and then I heard Justin Bieber's yummy and was like nope we're in reality that's a song for sure. God, dude, Sniper, how are you nodding your head to that? Like, I get, uh, I will admit, it is somewhat of a catchy song, but that song literally brought on the COVID pandemic. So, no, I won't. Could have picked any other song off that album. He goes with that one. And finally, no, still no updates on uh, whether we're going to be in the LCS next year or not. Haven't seen any rumors, haven't heard anything. So we're still in limbo there. But let's get on to the Dignitas series and what we need to do next week. I won't lie to you, the Dignitas series coming into the week, I was definitely a little bit more nervous about simply because I had a little bit more faith in this roster, and I still do. I think they will start to click as time goes on a little bit better. But there is a clear avenue to beat them, and Cloud9 kind of showed that a little bit. The one worry point, which I still want to establish up front, is that Jensen has had our number for last year. I mean, granted, he was on FlyQuest and obviously a much better team, but I'm thinking of several games back in spring, whether it was best of ones or even beyond that, where it's like, dude, he, he was just good. Like Jensen was just a solid player that Quid wasn't really able to kind of like overcome in that same way. So this is gonna be a big series for him to say, okay, well, was it FlyQuest as a whole and like inspired locking down or was it like Jensen actually being able to nullify him pretty well in lane? Jensen doesn't require a lot of counter pick nor anything else. So you can just pick him a champion and he's good on it no matter what. Like you can early pick the Solia. Hell, you can just give him Oriana and it's fine. Like he will make it work. Whereas Quid obviously, hey, obviously has a lot more pop off potential, is a little bit higher skill ceiling, higher flashiness in the game. So I want to see Quid try and get his number, especially for revenge from last year. Or last split. Jesus, time does not go that quick. I need to chill. The player that honestly I wasn't all that impressed from Dignitas, but I think is going to be like a clear like contention point for us in this series, is going to be Licorice. Licorice I do expect to step up and be able to neutralize some of the more flashy top laners, and Sniper is exactly that. Like Sniper is going to be the guy that tries to go in 
and gets solo kills and gets advantages in these lanes. And Licorice has always done a good job in neutralizing that or flipping it on its head and getting an advantage himself. The one area where like Licorice has not always been the greatest was not being able to close out some of the leads that he would get or like really push and extend those advantages, at least from the times that I saw him play. But he definitely looked weak in their matchup against Cloud9 and Thanatos. Now, maybe the weaknesses won't be the same week to week, maybe he'll step up, but that is an area where I'm looking at Sniper being like, hey, you go do your thing, there's opportunity here for you to take over this series. In a series where you were quiet against NRG, he could be very loud against Dignitas. And then the other eyes on for all this is actually gonna be the bot lane, with Meech having a phenomenal series here, and Zven actually looked pretty good in game one and portions of game two. I think this is actually gonna be a phenomenal matchup in bot lane, just to see who can go tip for tap, because I don't think Zven is like this late game hyper carry that Meech has kind of like put himself out to be where it's like Meech just deals a ton of damage in team fights and is there like Zven has always been Mr. Reliable, never too flashy, never too like inty, like kind of that nice in between area. So I think it's going to be pretty much even between the two of them in theory, or at least it should be. But we'll see. You never know how things go on the day. Ultimately, when it comes to our keys to beating Dignitas, my theory is tempo. As a team, I think Cloud9 was able to figure out Dignitas and make the first move a lot of times and constantly kind of keep Dignitas on the back foot. And Dig didn't really react all that well and like dig themselves out of that hole, literally and metaphorically. So what I'd like to see from us is keeping Dig on their toes. Be snappy with the decisions, both macro and micro. Constantly make them kind of test out the old brains because you know sometimes old dogs can't learn new tricks so if we can show our youth and be quick on these and up the tempo of the series the entire time then yeah in theory i think we should actually be able to win this one pretty cleanly i was really impressed with what i saw like i don't know what else to say other than like the sample size that we've got so far is looking pretty good in our favor and this is going to be the game that quite honestly sets expectations for people if we are able to win this convincingly we should set the bar at third and making worlds, 100%. If this is a struggle or we lose this, then it's like, okay, we still got some time. We can be figured out a little bit. We still got to work on a few things, but I'm hoping for that win. I know I said earlier that I wanted everything to go three games in each of our series so that we get the most amount of experience possible. I still stand by that. I would like to see us win this series two to one over Dignitas rather than 2-0 and have to learn how to bounce back from some of these losses. And there's a good mix of veteran players who should be able to test us on this dig squad. But I do feel confident that we can take it pretty handily. That's gonna be it for me. I will, ooh, that's a lot of water coming off. Okay, I will see you all on Friday for the pit for my 100 Thieves fans. Be sure to catch the live stream of me uh, watching these series and we can all kind of talk about it and hang out together. Uh, whenever the series goes on. I actually forget which day we're playing. I'll have it posted on screen right now, but I will be live at that point. Other than that, I don't know what else to say because it's one hell of a good time to be a 100 Thieves fan of the LCS as long as you like ignore that potential looming black cloud in the background. But beyond that, dude, it's looking pretty. I like it. I like where this is going. Jungle Juice got a good program building.